السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ This is verse 5 of chapter 4, Surah An-Nisa. And the Lord is saying that um, I have uh, already discussed this, this verse in, as far as the subject matter is concerned. Now the Lord is saying that the meanings given, the references of um, lexicons, Arab- Arabic lexicons and um, commentaries, etc. So he's going to present what their opinion is about this. So they're saying in most commentaries, mostly m- main uh, different um, words are discussed such as Nehla, um, Tibna, Hani and Maria these are the four um, uh, words words which have their more emphasis is laid upon we are saying the translation of Nehla that I presented before you all the uh, books of uh, commentaries and lexicons are they are agreed upon this that to give Nehla means to give as an obligation and with pleasure so there is no need to repeat all those um, uh, references here Nehla Lata Al Fars Ata and Fars in both in those both meaning is uh, meanings are found in um, Nehla and Annahal is also um, is a name of the honeybee who's already saying Annahal is um, in which the same letters form uh, that word as well, Noon, He and Lam, which are the same as this word. The others are all the same, as you saying, which I have already previously discussed. Lisan al-Arab has mentioned the same thing. Lissan al has, has uh, mentioned both these things that dowry is, um, should be given as Nehla and according to him this is something which even if you say to give something uh, in resp- um, for which you do not uh, uh, expect a return so this is a new meaning that it is Nehla is um, a, an obligation and a voluntary gift which is which is like which is a gift uh, which you don't expect any return from All the other, th- other um, books of tr- uh, commentaries, they are all um, discussing the same, the same thing, and the, the crux of the matter is that Nehla refers to a obliga- obligation and something that is given as a gift. Hani and Maria, they saying that uh, this has been discussed in detail, and these are the normal meaning in uh, Urdu which we say to uh, to give something with pleasure um, to some a food which is good for you the swallowing of which is easy on you which is um, beneficial for your body and for your soul and this is the the summary of of this so all of the um, all of the commentary commentators and they they have uh, taken both these um, words and so Imam Mufrabad Imam Rahab says that anything an acquirement of anything that is uh, uh, that is not there is no hardship in 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 acquiring it and it is used for food and haniyan is something which is acquired um, easily and 
it there is nothing there's no problem in eating it and in swallowing it and f- and also it should it will be delicious and he says that honey and maria these words for people who eat and drink this is they are also used as a as a as a prayer that you should eat such food may you eat such food which um, flourishes you which nourishes you rather and um, does not harm you in any way hana means good food um, somebody who made prepared good food hana toam rajula means that the uh, food was um, good for him and uh, uh, he liked it hana who means to feed someone hana toam if some food um, goes bad to fix it is ko is ko you say hana toam he he fixed it he he sorted it out sorted the food out mara ki bahas mein in the discussion of mara mostly is the meaning of uh, the meaning of it swallowing is uh, mostly presented so food that is made nicely and it goes so uh, goes down the throat easily so so is reading the arabic of a reference that so to like something and which did, did and did which did not to enjoy something which did not get stuck in the throat and s- swallowed easily the reason for this revelation is also revelation of this verse has also been given in tafsir safi wa kullu hani hani maria he is reading the arabic from that wal mariyo wal mariyo bima yahmudu akhiratuhu ye so we're saying that this is the, the the translation of this is that it is the food which uh, is swallowed easily and the difference of this is there's something that one enjoys and maria is that which is uh, is good in eventually and it says that people used to think it was um, a, re- a sin that someone who give dowry to someone and she take takes it back so we're saying the same thing that i have already mentioned that there was a sedation in giving a gift uh, sorry in taking a gift back so once you gave a gift it was to be regarded as being as a, a very bad thing to be for it to be taken back from someone another discussion is uh, as to who is the addressee here kataza and uh, some other books is means that the address is to the husband and others say that this is an address to the to the guardians of uh, women because in arabs if someone would have um, a, a daughter the people used to be sarcastic towards them so i think this is just a um, pointless discussion it means it could mean this, um, the uh, society sorry it could mean the society or the husbands and another book says that often some people used to give them their sister and marry his sister and they used to not give them a large part of the dowry was so saying this matter is um, is is still a custom in india and in pakistan and is called what is a wedding in a in a in our um, society so we're saying the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has uh, has instructed that this should not happen and this was also a way of saving on dowry they used to say that you should not give uh, some uh, something um not not give any dowry to anyone because one has given daughter to another and the other do- daughter has been taken and then at the and this root sorry the uh, this is exactly against the the uh, the the soul of a dowry the reality of a dowry because a dowry is the right of a woman not the right of a, of a family so this is why it says if she returns you anything um then part of it then use it so it no one else has a right to return any part of it on her behalf unless if uh, someone has um there is an unsaid um permission and their um, relationship with uh, such love and trust among each other that often 
the girls say that we will accept whatever our um, guardian uh, whatever our guardian decides so in such a situation the guardian is permitted as well but the main um, the right is that of the woman not of the guardian and the guardian only has the right up to the extent where the woman the girl herself permits him to have the right As we're saying that the discussion of jurisprudence matters, one of them is that um, can a woman can a woman use the um, the meher before before she actually receives it? As we're saying, it's a very fine point that perhaps a woman. Uh, regard, regards uh, dowry uh, as a certain thing and she um, has taken um, the she's taken the uh, loan from someone she thinks she's going to repay it with the meher the, uh, some people say that she can use them before she receives it but someone say that she cannot use it before she receives it and it has also been said that if a woman um, de de must, uh, abandons the demand for, for dowry, then the man doesn't have to offer it. So we're saying that this discussion about this, the uh, that whether it becomes, uh, whether, whether it will become abandoned or uh, uh, null and void or not, is this is the, this is the issue that mainly they discuss. So if a woman returns a part of it, then. How would that be? How would that be um, judged as to whether she did this because of uh, pressure from her husband, or she does she think that um, the if the husband cannot is not going to give me anyway? What's the point of me keep uh, fighting with him about it all the time? So, so the so the decision will be of the kazi, that is the the judge. Uh, she can say that she she wants it even if she said it she had said once that she doesn't want to give it. Uh, she doesn't want to take it rather and this was um, d done in a, in a in a trial of Qazi Surah I think Sulah perhaps um, there was uh, some judge who to whom there was a, a case was brought between a man and a woman uh, they were both presented before him b before Qazi Sulah and um, and they demanded he demanded the return of um, the gift that is the dowry sorry the, the the lady had said that she doesn't matter if you don't give it to me the qazi told the man to return it to her the man said that has allah not said that if she leaves anything of it um, return some of it then you should use it the Qazi said if she has given it to, to you from her the bottom of with the happen, happiness of her heart then she wouldn't have uh, demanded it back because she demanded it back means she wasn't happy about giving it um, uh, about giving it back to him Hazrat Umar bin Khattab wrote to the uh, his um, judges and uh, told them that sometimes judges uh, give uh, sorry women give um, a gift because of some kind of fear and so if they want to return it it's, it's her, her right so meaning meaning that if she says she wants to return it then there'd be this um, um, this will also be a possibility she didn't give it from the bottom from the happiness of her heart so the Qazi cannot just reject it because a woman has said okay and that, take it so Therefore, that has become proven that she is given it uh, with the, the pleasure of her heart. We see Awal Zanho, Raziallahu Anhu, um, once dealt with a, with a case of an Ahmadi companion. And he said that my wife has, uh, for, has um, permitted me to not give my dowry to her. To her. And Khalimasi Awal Zanho asked, that, Did you give it to her? And did she then return it? And he said, no, no, this is not what happened. We were just talking and she said um, that um, I, I, you don't have to give it to me. He said that this is not the cor cor correct way. 
go and give her the dowry and then if she returns it then that's that's fine so he he was very happy he he, he took took a loan from someone and went and gave it to the wife and said that here's your dowry now uh, he, she said i'm not going to return any of it get lost so he went to the Holy Messiah and he said that uh, this is what's happened. <laughs> so so you, you can, un one can realize whether someone, uh, when someone really um, returns it or whether somebody thinks that, um, well, I'm not going to receive it anyway, so I might as well um, uh, uh, permit him not to give it to me. Imam Jalaluddin Sahib Siyuti was saying these are uh, old things which are repeated, there's nothing new. So they're saying how much the meher should be. This is the discussion which many uh, uh, jurisprudence um, clergy have uh, have uh, picked up, have questioned. The Prophet Islam has spoken of the appointment of appropriate dowry and according to the custom of the time that in our countries the problem there's a problem that the intention is something else and just for show people um, write the dowry as being hundred thousand rupees and it's only written um, because the man should be in within the grasp and then from that there can be other um, re results uh, and because the the intention is not, or the woman does not intend to receive, take it, and the man does not in, in, intend to to receive it. So, in such a situation, that uh, he was, if 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 uh, it is not given, and it is it is the decision is kept. Sorry. Huzur is saying that the evil um, intention is not supported by the Sharia or by the by the um, by the laws. This is a very important uh, com uh, decision of the Promise of Islam. Whether a man gave it with pleasure or not, this is a new uh, a new uh, aspect, and this is a very beautiful and exquisite commentary on this verse which no one has ever thought about nehlatan is also it can also um, refer to the one who is giving it that has she has he given it with pleasure or not so whether it was due to uh, some custom or because he wanted to show off it's because he was happily he wanted to give it this is the important matter which the promise of islam has raised that the customary uh, dowry or the one for showing off which um, is um, customary in some uh, some countries so that people sh no one should be able to divorce so that there is a pressure on the on on the on the husband that where the woman's um, rights are being kept in the same way the husband's um, rights are also being being um, being kept in view that her his uh, desire should also be kept in view so saying that people for example they write many hundreds of thousands of rupees in in um, in dowry which they are not intending to give at all so saying that sometimes such numbers came to uh, came to people uh, people have come to me in the cars which uh, have uh, which uh, write a lot of um, an amount of meher but they don't really intend to pay it and I say to them that you should change this amount and write down as much as you really are willing to pay Khalimus, uh, Khalimus the second Khalifa said that I have said that it should be me the dowry should be of uh, the um, the pay of six months or one year so we're saying that this is um, this ended here there might be the discussion might be elsewhere of this issue those asking me the other side those saying that the pages have gone um, um, have been misplaced
فرماتے ہیں مجھ سے کوئی مہر کے متعلق مشورہ کرے The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, if someone, if anyone asks me about how much dowry to give, then I give the, I say that you should give from, uh, you should give um, dowry from six months to one year, um, owner's um, uh, wealth, sorry, uh, a pay, and this is because uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has uh, was told by Allah to to keep. Uh, 10% to ask for 10% in, in the will so and is regarded as it being a large amount of sacrifice so I think that to say 10% to, to, to give half of one's um, so is that this per, a person who gives that much dowry he's been given the um, the, revo- the the news of the reward of heaven so uh, so and we if the a ten, a ten years uh, earning of ten years if you give one year, one year of that then it becomes one tenth so this is an appropriate sum of dowry so if someone is giving for one one year's um, pay then then it is as if she's giving of a whole um, uh, and sorry this can be uh, useful for the lady for for a, for a long time and the whole point of um, of of dowry is um, is, such, is satisfied in this regard then he says that jamaat the jamaat shouldn't be so little that it should be um, against the woman's dignity and it shouldn't be a, a um, mockery of of the of the um, system and it shouldn't be uh, so much that it's beyond anyone's um, capacity to pay so <coughs> therefore it it should be it, it should be given either six months pay or uh, a year's pay should be given who's are saying here what should be kept in view is that it was it's been regarded as okay this is this is a a suggestion and the Prophet does not mean to say that it is essential for every um, uh, Ahmadi to give at least six months um, uh, of um, uh, six months earn, uh, of earnings. I was already saying that uh, people's situations and circumstances are different, and people's um, people's um, wealth is pay is different as well. So a person who is a millionaire, for him to say. Uh, a year's wealth or um, a year's earnings or a f- uh, six months is is, uh, is something which will be pointless for him because according to the rights of the marriage a woman is given uh, if she's if you think that she is she should be given a year's um, w- amount of earnings of the of the husband this i don't think this is based uh, this would be, would be based on that and the what second khalifa said that the, the so much money should be given that a woman can uh, take care of herself um, um if so if her husband leaves her or so, then she can independently take care of herself so if the p- parents she doesn't have parents or the parents can't look after her then she should at least have she should know that she has a she has some uh, her own money and she can uh, uh, she can um, live on those but as far as children are concerned the, the responsibility of children is in any case on the father those who grow who are uh, who are elderly uh, older they can sp- uh, live with whoever they want to but it's not not essential that uh, sorry that their the, the responsibility of their um of that is not to the on the woman if the lady even if the lady keeps a woman the children with her and the kaza decides that this should be the case then islam uh, puts the responsibility of their daily life on the man so the 10th um the, the the 10th part of that is 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 correct this this logic logic is correct if a, an, a woman on her own gets a whole year's wealth, then it means it is uh, it's the same as if it is the for the whole f- is for the whole um, uh, it's, it's equivalent to a whole um, 
10 years of whole families uh, use, usage. So as we're saying that this, while uh, appointing the number, amount of dowry, this should be kept in view. This aim should be kept in view that a woman's um, will a, a woman's um, respectful, respectable. Um, w will it be a, a respectable way of life for her? So, when with these, these two things coming together, the decision that is made is not essential that it would be um, only for six months or something from. A, 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 a rich man's dowry would be something else in that case and a poor man's would be something else and some would be would be fixed between for some it would be fixed between a ten year uh, one year and six months and in some situations there is a different um, situation which would be um, the deciding factor so this is just a suggestion and it should not be regarded as um, or applied as a um, um, law of um, the Sharia, but to, you should keep the. It is uh, essential of, uh, for every believer to to make sure that he does. He he gives his wife the enough dowry, which, if in case there is a divorce, then she is she is able to live. Um, uh, respectfully on her own. Richard Bell in his commentary speaks, uh, is, is expresses surprise in the word sadhukat. He says that sadhukat only here is only here is usually taken as equivalent to mahar, bride price. He was saying that this is a, a very um, it's, it's a very um, um, lowly kind of word, bright price. So as we were saying, Nahla has should have this meaning, should also be kept in view, just as um, the uh, um, dictionary writers have said that ne that dowry is something which is given Nehla, which means something that is given without the expectation of any return. So purely as a gift. So if this is a, a gift and there can't be any price, price cannot be given to it, therefore it cannot be called bright price, bright price. Obligation means it's an obligation placed by Allah and Nehla means is applies to the uh, to the to the to the soul with which he, he gives it to his wife. So as if Allah has made it obligatory on the husband that with she that with happiness, with pleasure and without thinking of any reward, she should give it to the woman. And this is the reason why, if this is a, if it's, if it's a, um, if, if it's a reward of something, then it should be, uh, if then it should be the relationships of the whole, whole uh, lifetime. But even if there is a relationship of uh, one night, and it is, um, and uh, it will still be up. The whole amount will be payable. So, this has got nothing to do with um, uh, the reward of uh, of any duties, any kind of duties. It means that a woman has given her herself to a a man, uh, and then you should also present a gift in response. And that gift, often, even if the marriage has not been consummated, then it still has to be given. Uh, half, so uh, at the same time, it's a gift and it's a an obligation, and it's a, a gift as uh, with the respect to the emotions of the husband and um, what the wife feels, and obligation as it's it is a commandment of Allah. So both meanings are applied to this word at the same time. I was saying that for no reason. This uh, subject has become well known. They keep tying it to orphans. They say that the meaning will then be that the orphans are not to be defrauded of the dowry. It will be ordinarily ar arranged for marriage, I think, Huzur said. Bell has done another thing, Huzur saying, according to his, um, his um, old habit, he has changed the order of the verses around. He says, and Montgomery Ward says, 
Also the card, not the usual mahar, not the usual dowry. The meaning here is, is, is thus uncertain, perhaps, morning, morning gift. That so they're saying that the custom that was um, in the um, uh, in the British 13 or 1400 years ago, it was uh, as a response to morning gift. They want to apply that custom to the Muslims. Morning gift is the name of that gift which uh, the um, husband gives to the wife on the second day as a expression of his of his love. So Montgomery Ward has uh, this is all he's heard, uh, he has gathered from this um, this verse that just as it's done in Scotland, um, so um, the morning gift should be given. That's all he thinks that this verse means. The the discussion as to how how much it should be. There's been different opinions um, uh, offered about that and as to how much it should be. But they are saying that here I don't have the ref reference, but the Orientalists have also uh, copied the jurisprudence um, specialists and have not presented their own points of view. And I'll give you, I'll tell you their opinions on how much the dowry should be. Another strange thing, which is, um, they are saying that. Our classical fiqh books, in them, such uh, some weird, really strange uh, things have uh, found their way, and I wish to to inform you of these. The fact of the matter is that in the fiqh that is in the jurisprudence, the experts kept oh, each or oh, such usage of a word uh, in. Uh, in view which was not possible possible in practical life or at least not in the known uh, world it's impossible for them to uh, to ha to occur to happen but because uh, as a um, he tried to uh, he tried they tried to uh, put light shed light on every corner so no, so that no one can say that um, they haven't. Um, there is something that is missing, so that so he has let everything into his uh, books, which has been a source of um, trouble for Islam. And they look to see uh, what a strange, um, what a strange um, the religion this is. Um, Zuri is saying that I, in my, I have in front of me Urdu translation Mahak Mai Aukat from is called Kitabul Fikal and Mazahir Mazahibul. Sorry, Zuri is saying this is a famous book. I didn't catch the title. Sorry, Zuri said this is a famous book which um, has present, presents four major opinions of of, of, of fiqh of jurisprudence Maliki, Hanafi, Shafi, and Hambi, Hambli, no, sorry, Hambli. And so saying that oh, all of them, their uh, points of view have been co co collected together in this book, and this has been translated by some translation department. Now they're saying, let's see, with the discussion of dowry, that that wealth, which after the um, the treaty of uh, of nikah, they're saying that in Arabic the word is uqta, and but in Arabic we say uqta. The real the uh, nikah is called aqt. And Uqtatu Nika means to tie the bond of a um, Nika. And uh, the, look at the words that they're, the words that they're using that that wealth which is given uh, is they give to a woman after or um, 
either they give it to the uh, a wife and then as they say that if they do something which is uh, like a, like a, a husband and wife and if they they they're not really husband and wife then it is given who's what is saying that can you imagine what kind of a thing this they are saying that if somebody doubts that someone is his wife and she he has a relationship with her, with her and that woman uh, and uh, they're saying that if this if this uh, decision of the jurisprudence is uh, true correct then you cannot have any uh, people you cannot uh, say uh, you cannot regard it as a crime at all they will they will both say that um, they did it because they thought that the person was uh, her husband or the wife and they'll just give a dowry and what how much the dowry can be this is just um this is um and that's that, that that will dis I'll show you later on what they think who's saying that I'm just I'm just telling you that these things are matters that have found their way into these books and they had nothing to do with the traditions but there is these uh, the cunning um methods of writing and um, unfortunately in the non ahmadi muslim society these books are um, are regarded as the final word and they think that whatever is in there is what is correct and it must it is essential to um to obey every aspect of the jurisprudence decisions that have been made therein they're saying that look at where their brains have uh, traveled how far their brains have traveled of uh, as regarded meher has in, as including that wealth which is the right of the person who cannot um, fulfill the rights of the needs of his own wife so from the woman she she can give to a man she should give to a man for example a man has uh, married a tiny tiny baby and um, his mother has also given that child milk so then she will be haram for him and so she will be, you have to be given meher so you're saying imagine what a complicated issue they have solved a person has uh, a nikah with a baby who is uh, who is weaning and and no um, dowry has been set and afterwards they find out that that baby is also the her the foster sister so because the, the mother has um, fed them uh, give them the milk they have shared um, they have sh they have shared um, a mother's milk so what should she do now that the, now she will be she will have the right to have um, dowry and and the husband will also get half of that dowry zuri salafing is saying that the meher these they're saying that the dowry shall be distributed but who who will give the dowry though that's the question is saying no one knows the answer to that this is in kitab al fiqh is um, urdu translation ye likhte hain Al-Fiqh al-Islami saying that Al-Fiqh al-Islami writes Wal-Adilla is reading the Arabic Zuri Singh says Zaheli or Zahaba but uh, it's, a, it's a book that's been published in Damascus and it's the writing of a, a scholar a scholar from Damascus he says that we go into Malki uh, one, one fourth of a dinar or uh, three coins of uh, silver should be given and what was dinar at that time it is um, that so we're saying that it doesn't say how big the coins should be so cool so it's the same thing that, that we don't know what they're trying to say if it is if you take the dinar in these days then dinar is in two countries is in uh, north africa probably in tunis and uh, you're saying is the value not separate you're saying that you've got the value haven't you in the sudan 1.5 1.28 dinar is equal to 1 pound 
and in Tunis 1.4 uh, dinar is equal to 1 pound so if uh, someone is given one one fourth of one dinar meher so then it would be around 30p so they are saying that this, 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 should be the, this would be the morning gift according to these people but the morning gift of 30p maybe she might leave, leave him 5p <laughs> then the Haniyam Maria would mean that he should live, he should enjoy the 5p so they are saying that what can you buy for 5p these days he was asking he was saying that he'll just keep it in his pocket the Irav Shafi and Nabila the, there is no minimum of dowry anything that is ever, that could be sold or that has a, a, a cost can be a meher he was saying that these people who have said that um, they, there is no minimum amount they are uh, probably uh, have their um, uh, have in mind the nikahs of the Holy Prophet where particular dowries were not set which could um, become a guarantee for them some jurisprudence experts understood this and they said that the Holy Prophet um, own person and according to his status there was there was no no point in uh, setting a dowry because he was he was himself a guarantee for them and after you after him Allah uh, had um, given them such trusts that they could never be left abandoned and uh, without any any help so therefore the meher does not apply to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so it, because it, it became a kind of uh, understood the dowry and the uh, fact that this is correct is that when Allah uh, permitted the Holy Prophet Sallallahu to leave his wives uh, with, with that the conditions that he t uh, told them he said that I, I'll give you a plenty of um, um, wealth and I will um, uh, make you independent and then and I'll leave you in a good way so this proves that those people are right that they, in the, the, uh, the, as far as the Holy Prophet ﷺ was concerned there was no point of um, of keeping a, um, a meher so it is a dowry so whether the Holy Prophet ﷺ gave less or more this is not the meher or the dowry that is mentioned in the Holy Quran that is uh, to do with the the a life and the character, noble character of the Holy Prophet so it's hidden within it, it's concealed within him and although he, he didn't express it, it is impossible that the Holy Prophet could have left, abandoned a, a, a wife so that they, sh they would be left um, with, for, with nothing so he was saying this is a, uh, other um, scholars <coughs> were compelled and they thought that if we give a declaration then that may um, make a decision then that may um, affect the nikah of the Holy Prophet we were saying this is wrong we were saying that if for example if a student studies that in, in a fika school in a jurisprudence school that if someone a child climbs on somebody's head then will the, the salat will stop so then he, he then asked the question a, a student asked the question that what about imam hasan and imam Hussain when they used to stand climb on top of the holy prophet sallallahu then is it, with his namaz will his salat be um, be ruined you are saying that these are uh, silly matters you are saying that from the the prayer of the holy prophet sallallahu was uh, was such that he was he was so engrossed in Allah when he was praying that n n none of these things used to um, used to interfere with with his attention. So an ordinary person, if they have um, a child running around over them, then he will not be able to think about God. He will just be worried about Allah. Sorry, he would be only be worried about the child. So. If you look at the surround, uh, circumstances, then you can understand these things easily. 
Next, the different types of dowry are mentioned. One is Mahir Musamma, that is that dowry which is given uh, at the time of the Nikah or which is set at the, sorry, at the time of the Nikah and it is, it is announced at the Nikah. And this is a custom with us these days and no Nikah is, um, is, is read and, until uh, people um, are uh, witness to the amount of dowry because afterwards if there are any problems and there are uh, pr um, many problems arise so this is the best way uh, to best practical ma manner so the dowry that husband gives to the woman at the time of the wedding or afterwards is called mehre musamma mehre misal is that meher which even a woman is has not been given at the time of the nikah then uh, the a, a leader can set the nikah so it's not even essential for the meher to be set before the nikah and if it has if it had happened if it had happened then the kazi or the judge can decide as to how much uh, dowry they should have in the circumstances of both of them and in the details of this he even writes according to hanafi the wealth of that lady and her beauty and her age and her intelligence and her religion will also be kept in mind who's saying that all of these um, uh, if you analyze a woman to that extent in a in a in a law in a, in a law court is imagine how how bad that would be who's so saying that they have taken they have thought about all different possibilities Anabila, according to Anabila, um, there's another, uh, he's raised up another aspect. He says that the woman's wife's um, re relatives' dowry should be kept in view. If uh, if the different sisters, etc., are one of, one is married to a pauper and went to a clerk or something or somebody whose business is destroyed and the and the uh, wedding takes still takes place and each one would have a different dowry so hanabila so said this this would be create so many problems they said that look at all the uh, close relatives of uh, the woman's um, relatives and then take the take the um, uh, sorry the um, the average and then give it <coughs> he was already saying that our style is our manner is much better than this he's saying that now and, and according to another expert both of the uh, families should be judged as to, to, and it should be find out it should be found out how how much the dowry has been given in their each of the if their family members and then set the dowry you are saying that why not just look at the actual two people who are getting married and their um, situations they say that the word missile missile is an open word and in order to make a missile you should and that is example then you have to look at the examples of uh, people around and then there's another type of dowry called meher muajjil and one called as we're saying and in our nikah forms the words meher muajjil is mentioned we were saying that previously it used to be written written there and it still is what is this it is saying you should before signing it you should understand what it is as we're saying that so he's saying, and the doctor said, laughing a lot. He was saying, don't worry, it won't apply to you. He was saying, this, uh, these youngsters uh, who are uh, t uh, taking our pictures, Khalid, they said, you, sh you should listen to this carefully. What Mojjal is and what Mojjal is, that um, nikah, that uh, diary which is given immediately at the, at the time of the nikah or should always be ready to be given and so and that meher dowry which is given at the time of uh, divorce or when one of them dies and it's called muajjal muajjal means uh, ajal means a particular set time and ujlat means quick the first one is muajjal with ayan and this should be written 
They read Mojil as Mojil, so they would be, be unable to differentiate between the two. So it may be that one of them says that I, I, I meant Mojil, and the other one says that, well, I, I thought it was the other one. So it is important to write these things down so that there is no confusion. Because we're saying that the, this matter of uh, how it applies to when someone dies. So if a man says that when I die then whatever is mine would become yours and the woman says that if I die then everything that I have will become yours so it is as if this is also marimwajil that means that it would be something that is going to occur afterwards in history and the fikr the various reasons is we have written ourselves the thing that I instructed that it should be I uh, re looked at again. We were saying that we, there is, it is actually happening, but the words are uh, uh, used are uh, to, uh, they care too much about about them about the words. So it says, uh, for example, it says that mehed or dowry is the well, well benefit financial benefit that is given to the wife. We were saying it's a strange term to use. It's the name of that. Wealth that is given uh, f from the uh, from by the husband to the wife, but they are trying to be too scholarly, uh, scholastic, and they say that it's um, the essence of this is to take benefit from the lady. So he says that meher or dowry is um, is a benefit. Muzul saying the the benefit was by her, so if he it should have been paid in a, in a proper way, it not not in in this way. After this, Muzul saying there are references of the traditions, etc., and the mehr <coughs> the dowry that is set at the time of the nikah and it is mentioned in the nikah forms. Which this is the method that we uh, adopt. Um, and we say uh, before a nikah that you should make it clear. Otherwise, afterwards, there's a lot of battles and all the other mares or dowries. After them, they can create uh, problems uh, afterwards. Mer um, Mujal has, um, has been defined in the same way as I have said before. And, or, and also, it could mean that it should be either given straight away or it should be present so that it's ready to be given to her as soon as she demands it. Zul said this is impossible. The dowry that somebody wants to give, either it should be given straight away or it is wrong, wrong to call it majal and therefore the hus because husband uh, situation circumstances can change and if even if there is not a immediate demand, for example if there is a hundred thousand mehr was set and after that at the time of the marriage and then um, the mother the, sorry the husband may have become bankrupt at that time and then afterwards if she then say um, that I, I, I wanted to straight away then he wouldn't have had a hundred thousand um, rupees or whatever sitting somewhere in, in a safe uh, to be able to give her so um, a module is only that mehr which is given and the one which is uh, is not uh, paid for is called module and they have, um, they have said that whenever the woman can demand mehr any time she pleases, so they are saying that what does this mean about every kind of dowry? What do, what do they mean? It's the right of a woman, and Allah is saying, whenever he, he wants, she wants, she can ask for him. So why are they fighting, making all these uh, fights here? Uh, they're saying that they haven't gone into the details because a lot of the difficulties are born out of their um, their thinking. They're saying that there are many fine details that have been kept here. If the nikah, at the time of the nikah, there is a um, a, meh, a dowry, and then 
if the husband dies or if there is a divorce, then what happens? And uh, you can give the woman uh, money in accordance with the with the, um, whatever you whatever you want to. Zuru is saying that, and they should and you should uh, tell her to leave. Zuru is saying the way she going to leave too before the the nikah. So Zuru is saying that this is something laughable. And we uh, Zuru is saying that look at this. The question is that before the consummation of the marriage, the husband, say for example, if he dies, then he says that. The, so then, the woman, the woman should be um, told to leave. So Zuru is saying that where should she go? You, do you want to send her to the next world? Of course, if she is in her parents' house, let her stay there. Did they give reference to Hadaya? That in the uh, whatever, um, if there is a disagreement, whatever the Qazi says is is going to be the dowry is going to be is is going to be accepted acceptable to both parties. And Sahib Hidayah writes in detail of this that Meher Meher Misal is to, in that you should look at the beauty and the st um, the manner and the education of a woman, and you should see whether. They are uh, they are the same, of the same standard as the rest of the, the people in her family, and that's what it would be the dowry. The dowry will be set. So they're saying, if this happens, and a woman will say, for God's sake, don't marry me. So they're saying, who's going to go and look at her beauty, and who's going to decide her intelligence and her education? And then after that, so they're saying that. Uh, then they have to find another woman who is similar and they should find out how much her mahar was, her dowry was and then if you find that then this uh, matter will be resolved. They are saying these are such strange things, for God's sake you should correct them according to uh, human intelligence because they are saying it's uh, just pointless uh, argumentation. They are saying I think I haven't spoken enough on dowry. Huzur is saying that uh, um, this uh, dowry is mentioned in the Bible as well, in Genesis, in Judges, and also in the Old Testament. There are many references that are found, and when when Huzur is saying there's uh, no time, no time to read them all and discuss them, but this is not a, um, a something. This is not content contented. Um, it's not a point of contention, sorry. And uh, the the uh, <coughs> the Bible has given the teachings of dowry as well because it's, it's the same God that gave the t teachings to uh, Moses as uh, as the one who gave it to uh, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So it is the right of a, a woman to receive such gifts, which can be uh, she come to uh, that she can use. If, a ta if she needs to, and if the husband is alive, then the, uh, it, they, she also has to fulfill the rights of that time. Sometimes a lady has, um, she doesn't want to ask the husband of, uh, everything. If her, hus her uh, dowry is paid, then it will be enough for her to fulfill her uh, needs for a long time, and she can use it somewhere. She can uh, do a trade or she can uh, do her day-to-day -day things, matters, uh, give gifts, etc. And there are some children who ask mothers more than their fathers, and if they have something, only then they can give. So this is the custom that it should be given quickly. Or this is not a custom. Then this is what should be done. Should be uh, you shouldn't wait for death or um, or uh, divorce. Ahmadis should pay the <coughs> uh, dowry as soon as possible, as far as they can, if somebody can afford it. But there is one thing which is not appropriate: is that some uh, guardians um, take the uh, the dowry and then do the marriage, and they are actually they do that so they can prepare the the da the dowry to give into the lady, and they say that. We want the, the maher first, and then we will make prepare the 
dowry for the lady Muzur is saying then if the this should be that the, the dowry should be what um, if she wants to spend on it she should so this is this custom is completely wrong and this should be completely uh, ousted from the jamaat oh, the jamaat now we come to the next verse <coughs> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا توتوا الصفحة وعلكم التي جعل الله لكم قياما وارزقوهم فيها واكسوهم وقولوا لهم قالوا معروفا نزلنا بتعزون قال بي بتعزون قيد دفع I have said this before as well that the Holy Quran's uh, Tilawat, before that it is essential to read Auzu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem. Bismillah in general is right when it, the, we, we start begin from the beginning of a chapter because the first a verse is Bismillah Rahman Rahim. So often Zuri is saying that people, this was a style of the Muslim Azanho as well, that he would only he would not read Bismillah Rahman Rahim when he was reading a verse from the middle of a chapter. He used to say Auzubillah and then he used to start the verse. He was saying when I read it, as I do it because I don't regard it as being wrong, and I think that for the sake of uh, blessing, this is a good thing because the Holy Prophet sallallahu has said that before starting everything you should say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim so although there's a different meanings that it doesn't mean that you should read it before every um, every chapter of course it has to be because that's the, it's the, it's, it, is, it forms the beginning of a of a chapter but if it is done before every um, uh, if it's done before every everything starting everything so when I say Bismillah it's not because I'm indicating that it starts the that is where the chapter starts but I think that before every um, verse if Bismillah um, Bismillah is really doesn't matter but if I had just said and then said this verse then it would have been fine and a lot of uh, commentators so a lot of uh, ex- experts of the Holy Quran or scholars they use this method and do not hand over the charge of property belonging to you which Allah has made for you as a means of support to those who are mentally incapable of managing it properly so feed them and clothe them properly and speak kindly to them this is the sixth verse and after this verse, the thing that I have presented to you, where um, the, the one that speaks of dowry, this is the one following that. So we say that from this verse, the different uh, meanings that have been ascertained, some of them are such so laughable that to um, say that they are uh, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's um, point of view is, um, is 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 disrespectful. They have um, they have thought that uh, sofaha refers to women because the money of um, the nikah it, it the, the uh, discussion is to give them, and they say they won't give it to those women who are s- silly, and they also take it to mean. A general meaning um, but some have thought that Sufaha just refers to women whereas this is completely wrong and it has nothing to do with this uh, discussion there it is said that that's a woman's right and the right is told that you should um, you have to give it to her it's her wealth and whether she gives it or not, they are saying that this has been men- if it's mentioned with great detail, and then call, call those women is, is silly, and then take all of that you know, back from her is completely against the greatness of the Holy Quran. If it's the words of God, then you don't even uh, want to believe in such a God who would say something like that. This is not at all mentioned, and the words here says amwalakum, which is uh, um, is. It means it's the 
is refers to some other wealth, I think Huzur said. This is the society is mentioned here. The previous verse, the women were being mentioned, and the wealth, the wealth of the orphans, which has been mentioned again, again, Allah is bringing that into discussion. And Allah is saying that even though, according to the mastery, there are two points. One is um, personal um, ownership, and one is national ownership in the sense that whatever um, economic system is in place, it is for the, for the purposes of um, the betterment of the whole society, of the whole nation. And and this is the same, um, same uh, law whereby there are taxes and then the different economic systems that are in play in the world. So on the one hand, it's a personal ownership, and on the other, and on the other hand, it is also national uh, ownership. So when it is said to give the orphans their rights and don't use up their rights or don't devour their uh, their um, rights, financial rights, <coughs> and give women their financial rights as well, it doesn't mean that if there is a person who is who has the right, but mentally he doesn't have the capacity to to um, to, to use it properly then if to give such a person um, wealth is against his own betterment and the betterment of the whole society for example if children are given the the wealth if you give you give give them their wealth and then somebody deceives them and takes some takes it from them and then and another person comes and deceives them as well then this would create a big problem in in the uh, in, in the society and this would create um, dishonesty as well it cannot be the national um, wealth cannot be uh, protected and if it is your your wealth, then why give it to the silly people? So it's a very beautiful may, manner of uh, speaking. If you give uh, the silly people their money, it will be their money. But because, um, in the sense that you have been made the uh, trustees, and you also have a right of how it should be spent, and you have a responsibility towards how that wealth should be spent. So the Holy Quran. Is is perhaps the only religious book which has um, presented a, a quote of word. So you're saying that I don't know about this in other religions, but quote of word. This is presenting. This verse is presenting. There's such uh, people who are not who are not capable of looking after their own rights, and it is the essential for the for the nation to not give them their, those uh, rights and sorry that, that money which is which is with them as a, as, a, as, a, as a trust for them the it is a, a trust with you and and they are actually belong to them so this way therefore it says so so this is saying that those wealth whose people's wealth it is, uh, it, 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 which is made for their uh, to fulfill their right to needs, etc. Here it says Qiyaman, for you it's been made Qiyam, that means the society, if in financial matters they do not fulfill their obligations, then the society will be uh, da damaged and their um, uh, economics will be dis will be destroyed that from those sorry that wasn't the complete verse but it says that you should feed them you should clothe them from that wealth and and you should speak them in a soft way you should make them understand with love and um, sincerity you should tell them that this is your money but they cannot give it to you uh, so that you can spend it yourself and immediately after that the verse that comes is
get up that keep um, giving keep protesting them until they reach the age of uh, nikah in and then if you see in them intelligence then return their wealth wealth to them so we're saying that the word amwalakum removes the veil from this whole thing this means that amwalakum is not in the sense that that you are their the masters the proprietors of that wealth they belong to them who are the orphans who before this have been mentioned uh, before they reached the age of adulthood they do not have the, the power to um, act upon them to sorry they have do not have the capacity to take care of them properly another meaning that comes out of this is that the uh, orphans who do not have money who are poor as well you as the people is a responsibility on you that you should look after them you should take care of them therefore it says allati jaal allah wala to to safaha amwalakum allati jaal allah lakum qiyaman that such people who because they for a, because they are young so they are silly or they are silly so silly they don't have anything left so we say that sometimes poverty is due to silliness as well we say we have seen many people who they, they cannot earn anything so allah says that give them their wealth give them their money don't uh, damage them uh, their wealth and Um, by and by doing so to nourish society as well so feed them and clothe them etc so in these words although the previous uh, people have um, not translated to mean this but the the um, uh, the taking care of the the orphans is is uh, the whole uh, um, society is responsible therefore the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has used uh, the same words in um, in st- stating that the responsibility of um, the orphans relies on society was so saying there are some silly people who have nothing when they are given money then usually they use it in the wrong way and some uh, uh, spend it and then again they are hungry so uh, how long will you give them the money and how long will you spoil them the um, essential thing of the society essential responsibility of society is to give them uh, average and you should speak to them softly and in this regard to speak softly is exactly in accordance with what is needed for masaila fala tanhar the people who are asking don't scold them it says in the quran so don't tell them off so such people will come to you and keep asking you and saying that fulfill our needs and give us money we need to do something so at such occasions don't treat them harshly you should make them understand and because you are only responsible to the extent that you you should look after their um, uh, living expenses etc and you, so the other meaning is is uh, goes along with this verse so those saying that is now return to the original meaning and then we shall go to the next meaning next uh, part of this meaning a part of this verse rather you know, before that i i want to present to you the um, what um, people are uh, commenting on this and who is uh, saying that was safaha let's first first of all this is the discussion this means safa wa tasha wa jahila that means somebody who became lighter or some showed stupidity or did something ignorant or he put his uh, uh, his opinion on the wrong path that means uh, to deceive someone about something so safiha fulanun that means to uh, make a fool of someone asfihu man yubsiru asfihu al ahmaqu asfihu man yubsiru ma lahu fiha fi ma la yanbaghi that a man who 
spent his wealth in uh, inappropriate places, just as I had made and um, I had given example. Some people give someone uh, as a uh, as a mercy, and then they immediately spend it in the wrong way. Some some people who a lot of people who beg here, they beg for the sake of um, drugs. There was a once he was saying that um, there was a poor man. And people thought, he thought that he was um, hungry, so he gave him 10 shillings. And um, it, there was a pub right in front, and he ran there and bought a um, bought some beer for himself. So he was he gave it for a good purpose, but he spent it on something wrong. So this is what Safaha means, to spend uh, inappropriately. And in that sense, these things go together. This subject goes hand in hand with that. There are other other meanings as well. Qiyaman means somebody st stood straight. Etadala. Kamal Amru. That means that his task became easy. Kamal Hakka. Someone um, made the truth clear. Kamal Al Amri. Jamao Sabata. To to stay firm on something kawamahu fi jahajatin kawamahu fiha at the uh, at, a po at a need at some point of need uh, somebody stood by someone so all of these meanings are found in this word al kawamu al adlu to uh, to do something with uh, justice to act with justice in the translations of uqsuhum it is mentioned the actual meanings from libas and when the when a uh, ground becomes a verdant and green then this word is used for it that the earth um, has a, has a war is wearing um, 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 green wearing green leaves etc as we're saying this is a, a well-known phrase in other languages as well and then it says that um, it is it refers to as such clothing which also uh, increase uh, beauty so don't let them wear old clothes just as when the world is uh, the earth is uh, when it becomes um, uh, <coughs> Uh, when the earth becomes green, it looks nice. So don't give people give them nice clothes and don't give them old and uh, torn clothes and think that that's your obligation. In another uh, tradition, <coughs> sorry, uh, commentary, it says that uh, a person <coughs> gave his um, wealth to his mother and she sorry his wife and she spent it in the wrong way. And this is why Allah revealed this verse. So we're saying that they look for um, uh, for the reason for revelation, and this is, and they limit the vast meanings of a of a, a great verse to some some small incident. As far as the word sufaha is concerned about this, there are such horrific. Um, um, uh, points of view that they, it is a trans sheer transgression is a sheer transgression against the Holy Prophet with, it was really saying that uh, because of this verse uh, some commentators were saying that I'm I'm talking I'm saying this from uh, Tafsir Ruhul Maani there the uh, point of view has been taken that Sufaha means women and Safi is a stupid woman in the eyes of the Holy Quran. If this is accepted, Nauzubillah, then oh, to offer um, the dowry and to uh, let women go happily and to give more than what is promised, this whole um, point, this whole thing would be completely finished because that you shouldn't give it to a stupid lady. And um, so, if and this is exactly what some people do, they don't give anything to their woman. They even they even they go and buy everything for them. They go buy the groceries and they even buy their clothes for them. 
So these are not the women who are Sufaha, it's the, it's the uh, men who are Sufaha, who are stupid. <laughs> and the Zuri is saying that <coughs> such women w uh, would not have, such men would not have given their Hak Maher to those women. If she had given them the, they had given them the dowry, then at least they would have had to, they would be able to uh, look after themselves. So this does not apply to women, to any women, upon whom some people have tried to apply this word to. It does apply to those men who take this meaning uh, from this, and they make the Holy Quran is a. Um, um, a uh, object of mockery. As we were saying, the verse of Faha is mentioned in the beginning of Surah Al Baqarah, and it's very clear when you read that. Uh, uh, when you read that, as to who the Sufaha are, are those people who adopt uh, silly um, uh, attitudes with respect to the religion, who regard the Muslims as being silly. Allah says, Allah in Nahum that these people are themselves stupid and oh, this is the this is the general meaning of um, <coughs> ignorant or uh, silly people that is mentioned here and wala to to sufaha walakum jalakum qiyaman is a completely different subject that's being mentioned here as i have said it's to do with the it's an incredible subject dealing with the econo economics of a country and it has been limited and not only limited or, but also it has been an attack on um, on women and also their traditions have been in, uh, invented such traditions which are uh, proof in themselves that they are false it is impossible that the holy prophet would have said anything like it. Zul is saying that they have found their way into our commentaries as well, and because some people just say that this is in such and such a tradition, this is in such and such um, uh, a commentary, <coughs> and um, it's been it's been uh, reported by such and such person, then they accept it. This is completely wrong. You cannot accept any tradition against which is against the glory of and the greatness of the Holy Prophet because the Holy Prophet's personality is completely of a devoid of any such defects. So just as the Holy Quran is la fihi is without, devoid of any doubts, therefore in the same way the nothing will be accepted which is um, against the <coughs> uh, the aims on, of the Holy Quran. So the Holy Prophet ﷺ um, was also devoid of uh, rab. It is definitely false. As we say now, I'll, I'll, I'll present that tradition to you. They have made a, a story and uh, it has become in some people's minds, I used to have this, uh, <coughs> and they used to think, they, they used to make up stories and uh, and they used to allege them towards the Holy Prophet Wasallam, which is a big sin, who's already saying that the Holy Prophet Wasallam says that the one who makes who makes up something about me which I haven't said, then they're making themselves a space in hell. But so all the commentators have seen is that whether um, they are um, authentic in the sense of um, the, the way that the line of um, the reporters. <coughs> now this is, is this is that uh, pretend um, um, <coughs> tradition that a, a, a black lady came to the Holy Prophet and his name her name has not been written so that so that um, you would not know that this uh, you would you would be able to then tell whether it happened or not and it was it was as if some uh, strange witch had uh, descended a black woman came to the holy prophet and she said that my, may my parents be um, devoted to you say something for us sometimes some something good about us sometimes whenever you speak you speak against women Zuri saying that how can how can any companion of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say that to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whose every moment and um, was um, under the uh, was uh, was under the um, immense favor of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and look at how insul insulting her words are this should have been immediately thrown into the rubbish bin he said that 
um, it, sometimes say something good about us. She said, she said that um, I have found out from somewhere that you are uh, you are o always say negative things about us. Is this acceptable? So someone would have said that to the Holy Prophet This reference is from Tafsir Ruhul Mani. Can you imagine? Then the Holy Prophet replied, according to this, What have I said about you women? Hazrat Singh, look at this uh, style of, um, of uh, conversation. He said that you have called us, she said you have called us Sufaha. And the, uh, and, uh, the Holy Prophet apparently, uh, according to this, replied that Allah has given you this name. In the Holy Quran, Zul is saying that just to um, prove their point of view, which is completely um, uh, foolish um, and which is completely against the aim of the Holy Quran, they have they have made this up, this, this tradition up, and uh, and that that was it. That Allah has kept His name, your name, as Sufaha, as, as the silly ones, and then so then they, they assumed that this was Allah's responsibility, and she said that you have also regarded us as Nawakis that we are defective and look at the, the answer to that he said that it is enough for um, it is enough for um, uh, it is enough for someone to be called uh, st stupid uh, sorry for someone to be called defective that every every uh, month for five days you stop um, performing salat is this not enough for a woman but then he makes gives an explanation he says that this is the defect but the next things why don't you why do you forget them has any woman is not enough for her a woman that when she becomes pregnant then she she is she will get the um, the any woman who carries a baby she gets the reward of um, performing jihad in the uh, cause of Allah and the next part is that when she uh, gives birth then it is as if she is uh, she gets the same reward as someone who uh, gets injured and dies in the cause of Allah who is uh, full of blood so at every at the occasion of every um, at birth this is how much reward she gets and then when she gives milk to the baby then what happens Every time the baby drinks, it it is as if um, she uh, gives makes free a, a neck of Banu Ismail. Who's um, uh, saying that can can this be the words of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi saying this is the source of our ulama and the people who are born in these uh, who give strange. Uh, jurisprudence um, edicts. This is what this is what they read, and they uh, they have they lack their own intelligence, and they uh, put their hand in hand with other people, and then and they don't know that they are falling into a pit, and they are also making other people fall into a pit as well. Was so saying, can anyone accept this that the, that uh, all uh, the milk that she may, makes a baby drink, every mouthful, is uh, is. Um, is a is, uh, as if she's freeing a slave of uh, um, Banu Ismail, the people, the children of Ismail, and so that that's even more um, bless, that's, that's even more valuable. And again, uh, again, when she stays awake at night for a baby, then again she gets the same reward as freeing a slave. Also saying that if you don't feed the baby, then um, the, the if, if the, uh, it is it is actually the baby who's doing a favor to the mother and then and and to stay awake for a baby this is also to um, free a slave of Banu Ismail there is the condition that if she is so such a good woman this is for such ladies who who don't disobey their husbands so in this in this way they have tried to tie women into chains by alleging that something uh, is said by the Holy Prophet they have actually chained them in their own chains 
ان هو سفہا ابن عباس اور ابن مسعود کی روایت اسی تفسیر روح المحانی میں ابن عباس اور ابن مسعود is saying of this uh, in in the tafsir rul mani which we have been presenting this another is another a tradition which is mentioned there which is uh, which is found in there that is it that ladies is not just ladies who are stupid it is also girl um, children imam razi accepts this with this um, condition that they could be included but every uh, anyone who is uh, ig- uh, who is foolish who cannot um, who doesn't know what's right good and bad for him then all such people can be called safi and that those are all included in this verse ab ek riwayat mein likha hai ki yaqeenan aurtein so now is it saying There is a tradition which says that definitely women are um, among the foolish, and this is again is in Tafsir Ibn Kathir has reported from Imam Umama that women are definitely uh, foolish because before women were mentioned, but now it's saying that only women are meant about uh, men sh- are uh, meant, and Abu Musa says that there are three people of three types of people whose pro- whose um, whose Uh, whose prayers are not fulfilled one is a person whose woman whose wife is uh, is uh, um, is not a uh, nice person who doesn't divorce her so if a woman's wife is is if allah never for, for, uh, forgives uh, he, sorry for fulfills his prayers and and anyone who gives his wealth to a safi that means that who, who gives it to a woman according to the same tradition that in which it says that the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said very clearly, clearly that every woman is um, is uh, s- foolish and so anyone who gives their wealth to a a, uh, a silly person will not, their prayers will not be fulfilled and anyone who gives who gives who takes a loan but doesn't Uh, uh, make sh- make sure their witnesses um you, you they, uh, who returns the loan and he hasn't they don't appoint witnesses so saying you a lot of you must have done this as well but so saying those who, that who who don't even uh, take a loan perhaps their uh, uh, prayers will be fulfilled has muhiddin ibn arabi just who he here he regards the wealth to refer in with regards to other um, uh, verses of the holy quran he says that it means that uh, facts of uh, wisdom or points of wisdom but he is saying that these are um, these are meanings that are not uh, ordinary day to day meanings there are some very higher meanings spiritual meanings or the type the sufis um, dream about baki to sab hi kisi ke lafz ka galat istemal aur jo quran is saying that this the wrong use of the word safi and whatever rights allah has given to as if allah has taken it back with the other hand according to this you are saying that there are strange um, commentaries and when i read it it really makes my head spin so sir kasmi says that when they are bas says is you saying that they have uh, um, really targeted um, ibn bas whatever there is a, a something to do with commentary they Uh, they mention they mention uh, uh, abbas abu bas is a um, name and when there is some uh, some, some religious matter some other other matter then they usually say abu huraira has said it alleged about abu, abu huraira zanho the main thing is that uh, you should always uh, judge a tradition 
at the um, the, the character of the Holy Prophet وسلم, and the Holy Quran but then because then there is no question of it being false and if it's if it is if it is uh, against that if it's uh, then no matter how much uh, how authentic they appear they should not be accepted so we're saying the clear um, Islamic uh, the Quranic uh, intentions and the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Sunnah that is Bayyinat that is that means very clear and lucid so those people who think that um, that these things are um, are right because they've been they are authentic in, in terms of how they were um, reported then this so another such uh, such a tradition is that they don't give anyone else the money that you have been appointed so that if you for example give it to your wife or your daughter and then you uh, expect to get it back then this cannot be possible once you gave it then that's it is gone as if don't give anything to your wife or to your uh, sister who so saying what what kind of a tradition is this the holy prophet used to um, treat women and children very kindly and he used to em emphasize this so much that there are some references that a person ex offered all of his wealth and he did not accept it he said what have you left for your wife and ch uh, children so the holy prophet was he was the greatest example of taking care of one's family. He says, خَيْرُكُمْ خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ That the best of you is he who is best to his, with his family. وَأَنَا خَيْرُكُمْ بِأَهْلِهِ And I am much better than all of all of them. I take care of mine, my uh, family more than anyone else. He was saying the rest. Um, there is a reference of the whole Prophet Islam, which we were saying that we should present it tomorrow, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.